What's happening y'all? Mark Smith, JBS Training Group on a nice chilly December morning. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you about Carbine Zero. Um, there seems to be like the, the biggest misconception out there is guys are just picking a zero based on what most people are doing. They don't really know why, they don't understand the zero. Uh, so I'm gonna dive into that a little bit with you. Try not to make it too wordy, not too long, but there's a lot of stuff to understand about it, about uh, why you're zeroing, where you are zeroing what is actually happening to cause this to occur and what happens after that zero point. Um, and all of it matters, right? Um, so the first thing to, to kind of wrap your head around and, and start to believe in is without a zeroed carbine, a carbine that is absolutely hitting at a, uh, a certain distance, point of aim, point of impact, you've got nothing. Right? If you don't got a zero, short of the gun actually working, you've got nothing. Um, if you don't know where the bullet is or why it's there and it's not hitting point aim, point impact at whatever distance you've chosen, you're, you're throwing hopes and dreams out of the end of the muzzle and, um, and, and hoping for the ding fairy to show up and save you, right? And that's not a great idea. Uh, so it matters and it matters a lot. Um, the, the way that this works is uh, with any any optic you're going to have uh, what's known as the line of sight right that is basically the laser beam that comes out of your eyeball intersects the reticle within the optic and then continues to the actual target point uh, where you're placing the and aligning the optic on a specific uh, part of the target that's a straight line it never has any deviation from it uh, so short of mirage or anything weird like that it never has any deviation uh, the muzzle however is launching a projectile that is not on a straight path uh, I think a lot of people think that bullets come out of the muzzle like laser beams, right? Uh, and they just, everything's just a laser and it's straight for, uh, and, and there's no divergence, no deviation. That's not necessarily the case. Bullets come out of the muzzle in a cone of accuracy, right? And that divergence gets greater and greater and greater the farther away you get from the muzzle, which is why we have to shoot groups and not just single shots. So what's happening is we're taking a line of sight right that comes straight through here and we're angling the entire gun to allow the muzzle to launch a projo uh, that is projectile on a certain flight path that intersects that straight line line of sight at a given distance on a certain spot on the target um, from there some things start to happen so we're going to talk about the most common ones which are the 50 yard zero and the 100 yard zero i'll touch on the 36 yard zero because it comes up from time to time and you know the so what of all this is as long as you understand the zero you've chosen and you and you understand why you're doing that i don't care where you zero the gun right um but there's there's tons of guys that show up to class and I, i've had guys with seven yard zeros i've had guys with 200 yard zero i've had guys with what they call a 300 yard zero had one guy with a 72 yard zero as long as you know what's going on and why you did that, I'm cool with it. But we need to understand that. So I'm going to jump over here to my, uh, my little sketch pad and I'm going to give you something to think about. All right, dude. So your chosen zero is based on you and your objectives with the carbine, right? And it's totally cool for that to change uh, based on what you're doing with the gun. So the first thing I'm going to say getting into this is the charts that you see online about if you zero here, your bullet will hit here, here, and here are a no-go as a blanket statement. You can't just say that because everybody's not shooting the same weight projectiles in the same environments with the same muzzle velocities and the same optic heights, and it just, it just don't work like that, right? So you can't just say that and say, oh, well, it'll be close because close is not applicable to the precision that we're talking about when we're talking about zero and flight path. Okay. So just like that is not a blanket statement with charts on the internet. This is also not a blanket statement with the chart I've drawn. Um, hopefully you guys can see this well enough to kind of get what I'm getting at here. Uh, this is going to be the arc for a 50 yard zero. This is the arc for a hundred yard zero respectively, understanding that this is not exactly how this works all the time. 50 yard zero, we're angling the entire muzzle of the gun and the gun itself <clears throat> so that the bullet's flight path is gonna intersect that 50 yard line target. Uh, from there, most of the time, it's gonna travel over that flight path or over that line of sight <clears throat> and its flight path is gonna be high at 100, 
uh, and continue on until um, it, it, gravity has overcome the arc that we initially put on it and it begins its downward descent towards that line of sight again right now you notice i left that marking out some of you guys are like oh he forgot to write 200 no i did not uh, i don't know where that second intersection is because i've seen everything from 170 yards to 270 yards i don't know where that's going to be this is why it's important to go out and track this stuff yourself 200 ish is a good assumption for most guns but if you've got a gun that doesn't look like the rest of the people that you're around, right? Like a lot of guys are rocking, uh, you know, regular height scopes, regular height optics, 14, 14.5 14, guns, 13, seven, something like that. If, if you're the guy with like the seven inch pistol build and the, the, the Unity Fast Riser 2.2 height mount, bro, you need to track some stuff on paper because your stuff ain't finna be the same. Um, so that's that, the 100 yard zero, right? We're gonna intersect the, uh, the line of sight at 100 yards from the target. From there, it's generally just gonna kind of kiss that line and ride it for a bit until it begins to drop. It's gonna typically be uh, low at 200, low at 300. So if you'll notice what's going on here, um, we, we've, we're creating what, we're attempting to create what I would call uh, point blank zero-ish. Um, flight path i'm trying to get a flight path based on my projo my muzzle velocity my gun my optic height all this stuff that's going to keep my bullet as close to my line of sight throughout the flight path within the practical ranges i plan to be shooting the gun um that's my end goal uh for most guns right most guns um when we get into i'm using this gun for a different purpose than that i want to shoot far away things can kind of change a little bit uh, so that, that's the gist of the arcs and understanding that we're trying to intersect this line of sight and and the more that we the closer we do that the more angle we're putting on the gun to cause that to occur therefore the higher over that line of sight it will travel all right so let's uh let's go with the 50 yard zero for right now we're gonna pick on it the bullet travels over the line of sight because of the angle that's created to intersect the line of sight at 50 yards away. So what's happening is line of sight, angle of the gun, the, this is intersecting at 100 yards, let's say. To intersect back here at 50, what I've gotta do is angle the gun up farther, which is launching that projo at a more increased angle that's gonna take it over that line of sight. Um, the issue that you might run into with the closer zeros, right, the 36 and the 50, is that, hey, I like to shoot at 100 yards sometimes at really small things, but with something like a 36 yard zero, 50 yard zero, this is uh, typically gonna place my bullet over my line of sight and there's nothing really in my reticle most of the time that I can use to read to tell me this is where I need to hold under at. Um, it's, it's a thing that you, you've got to go and print on paper. Like, you gotta go print it on paper and proof this stuff um, on the range it's not something you need to just say oh I'm, I'm about an inch and a half high because my favorite internet guy is an inch and a half high with his gun the other thing to consider when we get into these closer zero distances is the height of the optic right so this is a unity fast riser with the eotech on it the height of the optic if i if i rock a 50 yard zero with this gun the height of the optic lifts that line of sight so much that the angle has increased tremendously compared to a co-witness mount optic and we're talking about a gun that's now shooting anywhere from four to eight inches over line of sight at 100 yards away and beyond uh, until it decides to come back down to that line of sight 36 yard zero even more egregious right um the other thing about the shorter zeros is that it doesn't tell all the story like a farther out zero does. And this is not a, a thing on what zero I like. I use I use both, man. I use 50, I use 100. It's based on the gun, but the, the shorter distances, uh, just like with a pistol, at, at 50 yards away with a carbine, you're not getting the entire story of the divergence of that cone of accuracy that you'll get at 100. Um, same thing with a pistol. It's real easy to zero a pistol at five yards uh, and get a nice tight little group uh, or 10 yards or whatever. We back that up to 25, right? Now we're starting to see things open up and, and that cone begins to tell a little different story than we thought uh, we were reading at 10 yards. Um, 
same thing with a carving. The closer in we get, the harder it is to get the information we need to 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 adjust the azimuth, the the, the, the divergence that we will probably see at distance. At 100 yards, we've got some, a lot more data. This leads me to the next part. Um, I think that you need to be firing at minimum five rounds to get a solid uh, print on paper of what the gun's doing at least. Uh, I, I like 10, because um, remember, we're talking about a cone here and, and, and it's absolutely possible in that cone, the five rounds that you shot to be favoring one side of that cone and you don't have the rest of this story yet. Firing 10, firing 15, I've seen dudes that fire 30 round confirmation groups will actually give you the entire cone so that these five rounds that are in the point of aim that you thought were it are only half the story but now you've, you've added these other five to it and you're like, oh man, I really need to shift like one click up, one click right, whatever, whatever the case is. Um, that's the, uh, a good thing about the 100 yard. Uh, now, can you take a 50 yard zero and print it on paper at 100 yards and adjust the windage and, and things? Yes, absolutely can. It'd be the same thing as taking a pistol zero and at 10 and confirming at 25 and making uh, you know minor adjustments. Can absolutely do it, but just understand the 100 yard zero tells uh, a bigger story. For guns that have high optics, I will typically zero at 100 yards to avoid that, that egregious angle that is created at the 50 yard zero. Um, I will also zero precision based guns at 100 yards just based on uh, the, the math is a little easier for me uh, for calculating MRAD and things at distance and, and I also get a more precise aiming, uh, more precise detail on where the bullet is in flight because I've backed up to 100 yards. So that's what I got for that. All right, y'all, so a quick little demo of what I'm talking about with the different zero distances affecting flight path and whatnot. Um, this is a target that I shot with a 36 yard zero. I shot it at 100, 150, and 200 uh, yards. So I've got my 100 yard group here, my 150 yard group here, and my 200 yard group here. So we're literally like off the paper uh, point of aim, point of impact. So I'm holding my reticle here and firing at those distances. That is where the bullet is because it's now over the top of that line of sight, right? If you add 14 yards to that, same optics, same ammo, same everything, and do a 50 yard zero, holding center of black, I've got, uh, let's see, my 100 here, my 150 here, and my 200 here. So I'm keeping them all in the black, point of aim, point of impact. So why does any of this matter? Well, because nobody has a built-in range finder in their head right or in their body the problem with oh i'm going to shoot this zero because i know my holds and i know my drops and you know i know where the bullet is in flight blah 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 is that that is all well and good so long as you know the range to the target and in real world application be it you know defensive offensive hunting whatever if you don't know the distance to the target, you want that bullet to stay as close to that line of sight as possible. So that's why this stuff kind of matters, right? Uh, but I just wanted to give you that real quick to kind of give you a visual on what I'm talking about. So the gist of it is, as long as you understand that zeroing and choosing a zero is about angles and arcs, and it's about how far am I actually shooting and what are the parameters within that shooting that, that I need to be able to hold as far as accuracy is concerned, um, I, I think you'll be fine trying to figure this stuff out on your own. The problem is, is I don't understand arc. I don't understand, uh, you know, external ballistics. I don't understand line of sight. That's where we get into, I'm just going to do what the guys on the internet say, and I don't know why. Um, and the, the problem is, is that when you take, uh, I've absolutely seen guys with super high mounts, 50 yard zeros, 36 yard zeros, shoot at a, a six inch circle right at, at 100 yards away which is not a high standard of accuracy guys a six moa for christ's sake and miss completely and not know why and go recheck their zero their zero is on they come back miss completely they don't understand that the bullet has left that line of sight and is now like way way up here because they've never printed it on paper they have no idea where their bullet's flight path is um understand your zero understand your flight path go and print this every 50 yards uh, all the way out to as far as you want and then now you know now the assumption is gone now i know hey man this thing at 150 yards is two inches over you know uh, line of sight or, or whatever the case is um you might find some really neat stuff man so i've seen some guns that uh 
that are absolutely point of aim, point of impact with a 50 yard zero in certain projectiles at 50, 100, 150, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you might get lucky. I've also seen guns with the same 50 yard zero and higher optics, uh, different projectiles, different muzzle speeds, be six, eight, even 10 inches above point of aim at 100 yards. Um, you, you can't say, oh, this is what my gun's gonna do because this is what his gun does. It, it's totally different, right? Know your flight path, know what's going on with it. Go track this stuff, do the work, and uh, be a better shooter, man. That's what I got for you. Mark Smith, JBS Training Group.